I'm Dan. And I'm Dee. And this is, is our, our motorhome. motorhome. We've been travelling Europe for more than eight months now, and often people are impressed when they see our setup. We love our motorhome and have added a bunch of extras to make travelling in it long term so much more comfortable and enjoyable. This video will detail the extras we've added and little tips and tricks we've learned along the way that can make all the difference to how comfortably you travel. Okay, first things first. This is a 2014 Remor Europeo 8 built on a Fiat Ducato body and it weighs three and a half ton when it's loaded. Uh, that's the maximum you can have on a standard car license to travel in Europe. It's 7.2 meters long plus the bike rack, 2.34 meters wide and three meters tall. It's powered by an incredibly reliable 2.3 litre turbo diesel engine and over the last 20,000 kilometres we've averaged only 12.5 litres per 100 kilometres. We can travel with five people in seat belts, two at the front of course, two here and another one here. And when you pull the table out there's the ability to put in a booth seat here and have six people comfortably sit around the table. Often it's a compromise between living space inside a motorhome and storage space. Some motorhomes allow the flexibility of movable partitions or fold-up beds, and ours has a really great innovation. The bed at the rear of the motorhome is on a motorised lifter, and with the press of a button, the bed can raise about 30 centimetres to maximise the garage space if needed for, say, a scooter, or in our case, our road bikes. We really like having the bulkhead front. We've had the fully integrated motorhomes before and while they're fantastic, these are much better for space, usable space. So this week we've got this bed pulled out because I like to change things up, but it actually pushes all the way forward. So this whole driver's cabin opens out bigger. And when we're not sleeping up here, it's storage. So I can keep all my cool stuff that I like to have access to every day without having to go downstairs and unlock the garage. So I've got my food bowl, my yoga mat, and a few other bits and pieces that I like to use each day, sit there when we're not sleeping there. The kitchen's fantastic. And one of the selling points uh, that got B so happy about this motorhome was the spice rack just here for all her spices and all her essential oils down the bottom as well. Space is always at a premium in a motorhome, of course, so uh, we've got a little bucket that fits perfectly inside there, which makes it very easy for rinsing and washing up at the same time. And we also throw a chopping board on top of the sink there to double our workspace. It really helps having a full-size fridge and a separate freezer, for the obvious reason that you don't have to bend down, but also it means you can stock up. So if you're planning on heading out, staying off off the beaten track for a while you can fill the fridge right up you're not fumbling around in there trying to find stuff which i find really annoying so yeah having a full-size fridge is absolutely fantastic and then of course a separate freezer is a real bonus as well in summer you definitely need ice cubes place to keep the coffee got some bread for when we're out of town and there's no fresh bakeries around another really cool part of this um, has been having an oven We've used the grill a lot so we can still have toast all the time. So that's really cool. And it's also an oven as well. We were really picky about the bathroom layout we were looking for. A separate shower takes up more room than one that sits over the basin, but that means every time you use the shower, the entire bathroom, including the floor, gets wet and you have to wipe it all down. This layout is great and the shower is amazing. Without doubt, the number one thing I get quizzed about is our washing machine. It's a standard four kilo machine and I run it off the inverter in the motorhome. When we want to use the machine, I simply connect water in using the existing shower hose with an adapter you can get at any plumbing supply shop. I extended the wastewater hose with garden hose zip tied on and the wastewater drains into the shower recess and then into the gray water tank. Having the washing machine has made an incredible difference in that we're no longer reliant on laundromats and the hours we'd waste waiting around for the machine to finish are now a thing of the past. With the solar panel constantly topping up the batteries, our only restriction to staying entirely off grid is fresh water. So anytime we know we'll be away from a source, we just carry extra loose bottles. 
The same brass adapter for the washing machine allows connection of a hose and sprinkler fitting so the shower can be used outside. It even gave rise to some great memories at the Tour de France this year when I got to cool down a bunch of riders including the world champion on Alpe d'Huez. Absolute godsend. <laughs> I know it might seem like overkill, but we use the Dyson every day. It seems that every time you walk into the motorhome, you drag something in on your feet. And although you could get rid of it with a dustpan and brush, having the Dyson allows you to just suck it all up and throw it out. It's fantastic. And it's like this motorhome was just made for it because it just fits perfectly up the top. So it's really easily accessible. All the bits just sit nicely up there. When Dan and I came traveling, when we were setting up the motorhome, he had all these crazy ideas about things like inverters, washing machines and, and all this stuff. And I just thought that it was a waste of time and money. Um, but he has, and it has proved me wrong. And here's why. We have a 2000 watt inverter and we have two house batteries plus the main car battery and a solar panel. So we've been traveling for the best part of eight, nine months now and we have never hooked up to power. We also have a Thermomix. So, you know, his um, idea to really kit out the motorhome with power like this has really served us and we've been able to cook, eat, have light anytime, anywhere as a result. And I also have my hairdryer with me. So it's a 2000 watt hairdryer and um, yeah, I, I just, I love my hairdryer. So thanks to him, I've been able to use it all the time. Another really cool thing that um, he has bought is these uh, cigarette lighter uh, USB ports. So there's two USBs there so we can both we can charge two phones we have two in the front to, to charge our phones or anything that is USB chargeable. Another really hot tip about motorhoming or living in a motorhome is that you always need less than you actually think you need so once you've got all your space figured out I like to keep all my cans and jars in one cupboard so I know that everything that comes in a can or jar can be found here really easily and then like we have a storage container cupboard uh, paper towel, drink bottles, things like that, really accessible and easy. And then this one over here is just simple. We've got teas, spices, and all my morning stuff. So having like these slightly um, bigger containers to sit in there to pull out is just another really easy way just to have life simplified on the road. One of the things that we've added on to the motorhome is this large fitted LPG bottle. It's a 23 litre bottle and it's integrated in so it's got uh, the safety features so that we can run it while we're traveling. The best thing about it though is that it fills up off the LPG fillers that you have at service stations. So we're not having to look for gas bottles and it's significantly cheaper than having to swap bottles in and out. We've got the different adapters for the different countries and it simply goes onto there. And if I only need a third of a bottle, I can just fill up a third of a bottle rather than having to replace the whole thing, which would be the case if you couldn't fill it up from a service station. Away we go. That's it, it's as simple as that. Just the same as if the car were running off LPG. So today I've put in 16 litres into a 23 litre bottle. Uh, if it were a replacement bottle, a swap and go bottle, I'd have to wait until it was completely empty before I swapped it out. Otherwise I'm just wa wasting gas and it's considerably cheaper. I just pay the, the standard rate for gas. To give that more perspective, I just paid 78 euro cents per litre, whereas if I had to use this swap and go type distributor, it would have cost me more than 3 euro per litre, and that's if I used all the gas in the bottle before swapping it out. The price of all fuels varies wildly across Europe, so it can be worthwhile checking prices online before you cross into a new country. This way, you can either fill up before you cross a border, or potentially wait and fill up in the new country for less. As far as driving goes, a GPS these days is an absolute must. 
Some of the roads we've been down we would never have found on a map, but it's the ability to plan routes and avoid toll roads that I feel is the biggest feature. We've had some of our most memorable experiences at places we would never have been to were it not for the ability to route the GPS off the main roads. Not to mention the bucket load of cash saved on toll roads. 58 euro is the toll to go through here. Something to remember is in a motorhome the tolls are often more than double that charged for a car. We avoid them wherever we can and even though it does take longer to get where you're going, you're often rewarded with much nicer scenery. When you do get to your destination, parking a large motorhome isn't always easy or even possible in some towns and cities. We found using apps designed specifically for motorhomes and campers to be invaluable in finding places to park, water sources, dump points and of course dedicated camping grounds. The two apps we use and recommend are Park for Night and Camper Contact. Obviously this technology is always evolving so check the comments for new apps that might have been released since this recording. Over the time we've been travelling we've accrued small items that are just plain handy to have. These include floor mats for both inside and outside the main door, a clothesline that can be hung anywhere. This one's especially useful in colder climates as wet towels simply won't dry unless they're aired properly. These thick drying mats which absorb water and take up virtually no room. These extendable rails which we've used to retain things while we're moving or partition the motorhome off so we only need to heat or cool half the space. Hooks for hats and jackets or anything you need a place for. Hockey straps and tie downs or straps. And an external thermal window cover. These are great in the heat or the cold. Having a couple of cheap push bikes on board can be really beneficial, especially if you intend visiting some of the larger cities where you might have a lot of ground to cover or you've had to park out of town. We've really enjoyed cruising around on them and because they're cheap bikes we don't worry about them going rusty on the bike rack or attracting attention when we lock them up somewhere. These last couple of things are just nice to have. Driving a vehicle of this size and especially with a bike rack which is completely obscured from the driver's seat, a rear facing camera could save your butt when reversing and parking. In a foreign country communicating can sometimes be challenging. Having video proof could make a world of difference in the event of an accident. There's a lot of peace of mind in having a dash cam that records everything automatically. Just be sure to check for restrictions on their use in some countries. Well that's it for this video. I hope that's been of help to some people. And if you have any questions please jot them in the comments below. We'd love to help you further. And if you have any of your own great motorhome ideas that you've currently got in place, please post them below. We'd love all our followers to get as much value out of these videos as possible. Absolutely. So click on subscribe if you haven't already and remember to hit the bell for more notifications. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Bye.